How's it going folks? It's Rob here and welcome to our small little backyard farm and aquaponics YouTube channel. Today's clip is going to be a bit of an update, just let you know what's going on around our small little backyard farm. Um, we'll pop out the front for a little while, have a look at the aquaponics and I'll show you some upcoming um, builds that we have on the go. Uh, firstly, firstly though, I'd like to answer a uh, couple of questions I've had quite a bit lately. The first one being, can we have an update on your compost worm farm please? Um, I can give you an update, but it's not a very exciting one. We actually wound the farm down a couple, fair few months ago now. I think it was pretty much all early to mid-summer. Basically, I robbed all the castings to use around the patch, fully intending to um, get some compost worms when I had some time out of the compost pile and start off a new farm. Um, that just didn't happen. I was going to move it down the back here. Uh, the other week I threw in some well-aged horse manure thinking we might just start off another one under the house as it is and yeah we can transfer later on um, once we move a few things around. So at the moment we don't really have a compost worm farm as such. I will be sticking though with the um, bathtub bed design when we do build a new one and I'll actually bring you along and show you from um, start to finish the build and how to set it up and that sort of thing. So. Sorry to disappoint you folks, no compost worm or real update at the moment, but there will be one in the future. Secondly, the other thing is chickens. Uh, people keep asking me, when are you gonna get some more chickens? Uh, well, I've been laid up for a fair while now, just with a bit of a dodgy back. Um, I'm sort of getting out a little bit more now and doing a few things. So I'll bring you up to date um, where we are with the chickens in a little while. First off though, I thought we'd have a crack at um, the aquaponics and just have a bit of a walk through and see how things are going there. So the aquaponics is doing rather well. As you can see, that can Kong is still out of control. Um, it just happens to be one of those plants that absolutely loves the aquaponics. We've got a couple of flowers on it as well at the moment. So we might be able to get a seed pot or two off it this year. Last year, they all went a little bit moldy, so we didn't get much. A couple more flowers have been and gone down there. So we'll just a bit of a waiting game to see what happens with that. Uh, down the front here, the garlic chives are absolutely booming. Some more of those will be coming off with some potato salad on the weekend. Uh, this is a little section I sowed out in the last clip, I think, or planted out. Um, there was some beetroot went in. We've also got a couple of small um, sweet basil. Even though we're heading into the cooler months, they should do fairly well in that position there. The little seedlings you can see popping up over the back are a bit of a mix. The ones with the red veining are the Chinese red amaranth and the um, more silver looking green leaves are the Chinese celtus or the Chinese lettuce. Um, that one there is all seed collected from the plant at the small root pouch garden at the back stairs. So I've got a load of them in there. Traditionally they're grown for their stem in Chinese cuisine, but we actually don't mind the leaves so we thought we'd try and grow a fair few and um, keep them rather small and we'll just harvest them um, as a bit of a um, greens mix. Down here we have some of the rabbit's ear lettuce and I think there's also some curly leaf lettuce I've sprinkled through there as well. So they should be coming up soon enough. And over the back we have some of the um, flat, leaf par flat leafed parsley um, seeds I scattered around a while back. And I just popped in a couple of lavender cuttings as well just to get them rooted. Um, over in this bed here, same story, a whole heap of seeds were scattered out. The amaranth has done really, really well. Um, you can see one or two of them getting their little red stripes on them. The mushroom herb had a massive cutback and as you can see it's putting out little branches already. So that should be a ball of green in no time at all. The beans that were popped in are doing really well, phenomenally well I think. They've put on a load of growth. And just down here I've popped in a couple of daikon radish seeds. Um, they're one there and one there. So 100% germination rate. But this plant down here looks a little bit dodgy. It doesn't look as strong as the other. So we'll just see what happens with them. The KY1 or Scornsby um, dwarf tomatoes, they do need to be thinned out. That's the plant I'll be keeping. It looks the healthiest. And these two here in this pouch will be going. And over in this bed here, um, it's the plant on this side, this one here that will be staying, and these two plants here will be going. So I just want to um, film it when that happens because I plan on releasing a video later on about growing the tomatoes in these little root pouches. The rest of this bed is doing swimmingly. Um, the Wong Bok or Chinese cabbage has done really well. It was suffering from a little bit of a um, uh, caterpillar attack early on, but I nipped that in the bud fairly early. 
And over there we have one of the little blighters that is causing most of the holes that you see in the leaves. Just the little grasshoppers having a bit of a feed. The Brazilian spinach over here has done um, really well. It keeps bouncing back whenever we harvest it. I just sort of can't get over how quickly this stuff rejuvenates. And we have another pile of cancon there that we've been harvesting. Really need to tuck into both of them, I think. Oh, just down the front here, I forgot to show you in the other bed as well. We've got a couple of garlic. We've got one little um, sprout down there. Another one that's just breaking the surface there. Another one there, and there's another one over the back. And over in this first bed here, there's four. There's um, three along the front, so we've got one there, two there, and three over there, and a fourth one there. So some of our garlic is going to be grown aquaponically, and I'll show you the soil ones in a tick. Uh, we might set the camera up and pop a bit of food in for the fish. So I don't know if they're actually gonna come up and say good day. We'll just have to wait and see. They always get a little bit funny whenever the camera's right over the opening of the tank. Well, it took them a while, but they're hitting the pellets now. A lot of them are hitting them over the back where you can't quite see them, so... I'm definitely doing rather well, even though things are cooling down. The water temperature's staying fairly good. Definitely a few in there that'll be ready to come out um, for the plate as soon as we um, finish off the two or three left we have in the freezer. Just in front of the aquaponics, we have a root pouch garden. Jeez, they're very messy eaters today. Uh, this root pouch garden's only got a couple of plants in it at the moment. Just up the back there, we have the ginger. Um, it's looking rather impressive. And there's actually a third plant. There's a little um, yellow bull's horn capsicum I'm trying to save uh, just in the center there. But down the front here, I planted out last weekend our garlic, and we've already got a few that have shot. Uh, we've got one there. I know just a few more down the front here. Um, these guys here were all vernalized, another one there, which is a, uh, basically what you do to bulbs um, to give them a false winter. For um, These were in for around about six to eight weeks, maybe seven weeks in the fridge. And it just tricks them into thinking that they've been through a winter. So these guys here have taken off fairly well. Uh, hopefully we're going to get a fairly decent crop this year. I'm using two different types. I'm using a locally produced Glen Large and also another one that we bought from a um, local garlic supplier at a um, food market up in Toowoomba. So we'll see how those guys go. Um, and you may be able to make out, we have loads of little purple and green leaf seedlings. So I have a feeling we're going to have a, a fair few of these guys pop up in here. Um, the Chinese amaranth, that's from the uh, parent plant that was growing in this pouch. Well, that's just all the seed that's just been knocked out onto the rocks there and germinated. We'll be harvesting those as well as these guys in here. Waste not, want not. Now on to the rest of the patch. I thought we'd start here with this Tahitian lime bed. Uh, basically what I've done is I've decided to um, prune out all the growth from the top of the tree just to bring it down to probably around about two meters or just over six foot in height. And I've used all those branches as mulch underneath. I've run them through our mulcher. And I've also used the pigeon pea tree that was growing at the other end of this bed. Um, you can see here, I've trimmed it right back as well, run them through the mulcher and added them down below. Now, before I spread the mulch out, I added a handful of uh, organic chicken-based fertilizer and a bag of well-aged horse manure just to help feed up the soil a bit. Then onto that went the mulched up pigeon pea and also the lime tree trimmings. And I also tidied up all the Queensland arrowroot, the um, bits of the plant that weren't looking that crash hot. I gave them a bit of a chop with my garden knife and I've just tossed them underneath there as well. And hopefully that'll help feed the soil and in turn the Tahitian lime here. So I am looking forward to seeing some more blooms on here. We did get a couple last week. You can see that small little fruit up in there. I did see a few other blooms around. There's another one just up in there, actually. So hopefully um, we will get another flush. And I'm pretty sure that the fruit on the tree at the moment are going to be able to see us through until that flush arrives. Now, cutting down the pigeon pea wasn't just because we needed the mulch. Uh, it was actually shading a lot of the hoop house behind it. The um, other thing that did come down was a Chinese celtus that was growing on the fence line here. Um, this one just here, it was a fairly big bush, so it came down and it was used to make up the majority of this compost pile here. 
I also added in some brown scraps I've been saving up down the back, um, just other plants that we've pulled out of the garden and from around the yard, and I've just added it in there in layers. Yesterday morning I also took out some Chinese seltzers from the front yard, but I'll show you that when I show you the bananas in a tick. So that went in there as well once it was mulched up. Now this one here isn't going to be just a strictly um, tree-based mulch compost. But what I'm doing with this one, Wow, it actually feels warm in there already. Um, what I'm doing with this one is I'm treating it as our compost pile. Mainly because we have this little fur bag over there now. Where are you, Lizzie? Hello, Lizzie. Um, now we have her. I can't keep digging in the gardens or the kitchen scraps into the soil around the place, um, especially down the back there to feed up underneath the mango tree. So if I do that, she's probably going to dig them up. So I figured in a nice active compost heap would be the way to go. What I'll do is I'll just dig them in the top here and then cover them back over with the leaves. Um, and as I said before, we don't have the worms going at the moment. So um, yeah, if we get the worms going again, the food scraps will go in there. But for the time being, they'll just go into this compost heap here. So we might go out the front, Lizzie, which means I've got to leave you out the back because we don't have a fence out the front. What you sniffing at? You don't know. Okay, I'm off out the front, Lizzie. Bye. So I thought I'd give you a quick look at our rosella or Jamaican sorrel bushes. They've already got some more fruit on them that need to be taken off. So we'll probably nip them off tomorrow morning. Uh, we um, gave away some more syrup on the weekend. So I think we'll um, pretty much we'll harvest these and make up some more. We've really been enjoying it. So that's what will happen with those guys. Actually posted a clip last week if you want to check it out on how we grow these guys and also use them to make up syrups and jams and that sort of thing. The main work I've been doing out here though is feeding up beds and planting out broccoli. Just three Bell Star broccolis out here. They're an F1 hybrid that are supposed to do better in our warmer climate, so we'll see how they go. The gaps will be filled in at a later date. These last two beds up here, um, they haven't been getting a lot of sunlight due to a Chinese seltus tree that was growing just on the fence line there. And also to this stand of bananas. Basically the sun comes up over that away comes through the, side, the sky like this. The big seltus was blocking it out and they were getting virtually no sunlight all day. So it was very shady in here. As a result, we've got some fairly leggy uh, cauliflower there. And we've also got some taro that hasn't done much chop as well. So they're pretty much all going to be pulled out of the bed anyway. And we'll be popping something else in there very soon. Thought I'd also show you our new bunch of bananas we got on the go. Uh, this one here has six hands on it already, I counted. Plus the bell is looking rather sizable, so I'd say we're going to end up with a fair few fruit from this bunch just here. Um, the hands themselves are looking rather full too, so um, that's pretty encouraging. We do have two more on at the moment that I'll just take you around to give you a bit of a look at. So this first one's only got four hands of fruit on it, so it won't give us a huge yield, but it'll give us at least something. And the other bunch we have is on this broken um, plant. Basically, we had a storm come through. It actually ripped a few sheets of tin off a couple of people's workplaces, not too far from here. So it was a bit of a doozy, it knocked this one down. And it did have a fairly impressive looking bunch of fruit on it. But yeah, I'm not too sure how well they're going to ripen up. Um, the leaves are still looking green, so maybe some nutrients are gonna make it to the fruit. We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, it was a little bit disappointing we lost it. But anyway, if we do get fruit off that, that means we've had, and the other two as well, that means we've had four bunches so far. But I did see up here a um, fairly interesting looking growth. And it looks like we may be getting a fifth bunch um, just from this tree up here. So that's looking a little bit too swollen to be a leaf frond coming out. So we'll just wait and see what happens with that over the next week or so. So just back out in the backyard and I've been accosted by a dog and a ball. So no more Lizzie, not just yet. I thought I'd give you a look at um, something else I sewed out um, when I put the garlic in. That's just in this little wicking barrel here. This one here is a sewing of the red amaranth. Um, they're very, very tiny in here. You may not be able to see them, but they're the little Chinese red amaranth. I've put a load in there. Well, the reason I'm growing so many of this at the moment is they're just such a versatile green. We've had them in salads. We've also thrown them through a couple of um, stir fry style dishes and they've come up a treat. Um, so I figure we'll try and grow these. They're a very hardy green and then we'll get sick of them <laughs> like other plants we've grown and we'll move on to something else. But for now, uh, these guys look like they're going to be a fairly good um, leaf crop for us. So moving on from the amaranth, 
we have a barrel of comfrey in the middle of the path down the back and just over here just to show you quickly we also have a barrel with some weed some amaranth and some of this new zealand spinach or warrigal greens so we've got some of that coming up as volunteers they will be transplanted around the place this barrel here um, has been moved to make way for the new chicken pen so this area just down here is where we want to build our chicken pen now on the weekend bianca kira and i got into it and we started to lift some of the pavers um, that made the pathway around the beds down here and we've stacked them just neatly down beside a garden bed that probably won't be used again and yesterday kira and i got motivated and we dug out the bed in the center so it's been totally removed now um, kira got a bit of a crack with the drill as well drilling out the pop rivets and what we've left with is a big pile of cracker dust mixed with um, the soil uh, with some of my earlier wicking beds i used cracker dust instead of sand as the uh, medium down the bottom to wick the water up to the soil it didn't work as well as sand does so it was a lesson learned and i'm pretty much all just going to spread um, that pile of soil all over here and i've got a few holes and other bits and pieces around the patch that need filling up so i'll use some of this soil and the next bed to come out will be this one over here uh, it has a load of the warrigal greens there or um, New Zealand spinach in it as well as well as those tall amaranth they can just come out um, so some of them may get transplanted but that bed will just have its soil spread around here as well and maybe used to fill up a couple of pouches or whatnot we'll just wait and see so once that's done we can start putting up the chicken cage now the chicken cage is going to be made up of these panels over here so this school fencing is pretty much well already cut to size for what I want and mainly because it's basically the old chook pen those two bits there will be stacked on or one on top of the other and that will be the back or the bottom edge of the um, night pen and I have six lengths here all the same size um, four will be used as the side walls and I'll have two spare up this end here I'll be using some tin we've got up beside the house uh, Bianca's got to help me sort through it on the weekend and that will form the walls around this side of the um, night pen up here basically all our rain comes from this angle or the majority of it comes from this angle um, and also to our winter suns coming from that aspect there so it'll keep the girls nice and warm during winter and there will be trees planted out in here to uh, that overhang this section to keep it cool during summer plus we're looking at popping in some passion fruit and that sort of thing the other thing is the day pen now it'll pretty much will be starting at the edge of that wire sheet there and going all the way along here to roughly round about this little corner of concrete here so it will actually give them um, rather a large day pen that they can run around in i'm, I'm going to um, try and se section off little areas where i can grow green crops so they can you know probably grow to about 12 inches high 30 centimeters high then the chooks can come through and feed on them um, the little black dog hey lizzie um, she won't be in here she so badly wants me to play with the ball she's a very patient dog over the top of this i will uh, probably put some sort of wire mesh and also have it set up so i can put some shade cloth over for summer just to keep any of the um, eagles that we have seen here out of the pen from having a crack at the girls that's pretty much well what's going to be happening there so this weekend we'll be um, hooking into that bed and hopefully yeah we'll have the space a bit of a blank canvas to work on and we can bring the other materials down and yeah see what i can uh, knock up uh, down the back here one thing i did want to show you was this sacred basil um, there's not a lot on it now because it's getting a little bit late in the afternoon but the last couple of days this thing has been absolutely buzzing with the european bees uh, we had some friends over earlier in the week and they saw a couple of natives on there as well I wasn't fast enough with the camera but it's just been absolutely bananas the amount of bees we've been finding on this plant so definitely something i need to make a cutting of uh, because this bed here will be coming out at some stage as well just to let you know we'll be filming the building of the chicken pen or parts of it and also the different feeders and waterers and whatnot so um, they'll be going to the chook feeder and watering playlist or i might create another one um, so you can check them out as they're posted if you want to see our older feeders and waterers you can just click that little link up there and that'll take you to a playlist and you can suss them all out um, so yeah i do hope that you've enjoyed this little bit of a wander around the um the patch just looking at a few things i've been knocking off through the week with the help 
help of the anchor and Kira, of course. Next weekend's clip will probably be a self-watering dwarf citrus planter I want to make up using a 25 gallon or 95 litre root pouch. I've had one set aside for this little project and I bought a little dwarf Meyer lemon the other day. So hopefully that'll be next weekend's clip. Um, so yeah, if you want to suss that out, all you need to do is hit that little uh, hairy mug down there or click my face and you can press on that subscribe button and yeah, you'll be kept updated whenever I upload a clip to our Backyard Farming and Aquaponics YouTube channel. And you can come along and say good day in the comments section down below. I do hope that everyone's gardens are booming and you folks in the Northern Hemisphere have had a great start to spring and are starting to get some of your plants in the ground. And I will catch you folks next clip. Cheers all, have a great one. So just out the back here again, we have a Lizzie. Why is this man walking around with a camera? He should be kicking a ball for me. Is that what's going on, is it? He can't quite work it out. Why is he walking around with this thing, talking to himself? You crazy two-legged things, hey? Hey? I'm just gonna film this and then we'll go for a W-A-L-K, okay? Okay? I think we will. I think we will. But you gotta let me finish this first. Don't you just love the grin? Okay, Lizzie. You can follow me if you want.